Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire uh, well-beings to seeing every single Shonen Jump anime that is possible to us. And talking about it and recording about it. And our two series, because Jujutsu Kaisen finished and we finally f- fully finished off everything currently possible, we're not going to buy that game. Neither one of us is going to pay <laughs> the 60 something for it. Um, where We got Kuriko and we got Gintama. And today we're finally back to talk about Kuriko's basketball, the game that Kuriko loves. We're here to finally talk about it yeah. again. Ages. It has been a very long time, and I'm 100% ready to go back to Kuriko, because it was a very good series. It was just unfortunate. <laughs> we had unfortunate timing all around. So, let's start off, which is the start of the new season, which is uh, technically season two, but is episode 26. I never thought we'd meet here. Zen, can you tell us what happens in episode 26? Episode 26 is uh, everybody goes out and, uh, well, I guess not everybody because it's just like the the newbies uh, go out and they join a tournament for like a street ball event. It's like a, it's like at a big fair kind of thing. Um, and they join up with a street ball tournament kind of thing and they end up meeting some people from... Yosen High School, which we have not really seen yet. It's like a new group that's come in. Uh, and we meet Murasaki Bara, who is another member of the Generation of Miracles. Uh, and then also we meet a guy named Himuro, who we learn uh, has some... I don't know if I want to say bad blood, but he's got some issues with Kagami. He's got some difficulties going on. Um. They both have, basically they were friends when they were kids, uh, and Himuro is the one that got Kagami into basketball, and then Kagami started getting really good really fast, and it started pissing Himuro off because he started feeling inferior and like inept uh, in comparison, so they started playing against each other, uh, or like yeah, they made like a whole thing. About how we're the, they call themselves brothers, and then they they won't be brothers or whatever if uh, if Kagami wins, and so Kagami kind of like goes easy on him because uh, he doesn't want to like hurt his friend's feelings. But then that in and of itself ends up hurting his feelings because he he feels like uh, Kagami was looking down on him and not treating him with respect, uh, and so they kind of they kind of break off the friendship sort of ish. Uh, but they both have their their rings there that they still wear from when they were kids. And then uh, I don't believe that they end up. Did, is this the one? Did they finish playing here? I don't the, think the, they do. This one ends with uh, Murray Sakabara stopping the ball with like a sweep, and that's, that's where the right. episode ends. So they go that's through the right, entire okay. backstory about the whole we're forty nine and forty nine. Let's go, and then right when they're at the jump off, Murray Sakabara stops the ball, and he um, he says something about wanting to crush Kuriko, and that's where it ends for this episode. So yeah, that's episode twenty six. Um, it was cool because it featured a lot of people speaking English, and I love it when Japanese uh, people yes, speak English. A lot of that. It was a lot of that. It was very good. Uh, I liked it. I liked every minute of it. I liked that there were subtitles for the. <laughs> they did not remove the Japanese subtitles, so it was really funny to see English subtitles up top, even though I knew what they were saying, but they still had to include them, which is pretty funny. Um, I liked uh, hearing about Kagami's backstory about him growing up in the states, and then I think they also show. Um, I actually thought it was something state related, but it actually turned out it's because he was using the wrong arm. But I thought it was because he had grown up in America. He was trying to use like chopsticks on broccoli, um, but he wasn't doing it correctly. And I said, "Oh, it's because he was mainly from the states." He was like, "No, it's because he's using his left arm over his right arm instead." But I thought it was related to that. Uh, apparently, which I'm seeing from here in the manga, he hears from other people that there was something wrong with. Um, the Hamura's wrist but in the anime they show him noticing that there's like something wrong with his arms which is one of the reasons why 
he doesn't go all out is that he was holding back because he was injured for some, for whatever reason. Um, that and when he was trying to make the final shot, when he remembered everything that was on the line, he just couldn't bring himself to uh, make the dunk. Um, and yeah, I liked all that. That was a very interesting backstory to hear from him. It really made uh, it different because typically if, when it comes to Generation of Miracle Dudes, uh, Kagami is the first one to kind of immediately be fighting them. Because obviously he is. But with this guy on the team now, there's like another one to have his focus on and someone else can actually try and... They set up someone else who's going to be... But I'm going to assume, because again, I haven't seen the future one Zen has. I assume that's what they're setting up, is that they're setting up for another member to actually try and take down um, or compete with a Generation of Miracles um, member. And yeah, I remember it was just a really good episode to kind of be back. Some good funny bits here, really laid back, and it was a good start to kind of like a, se a season two. Some good intrigue stuff going on, some good basketball stuff going on. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, it's a good episode. Uh, I like that, you know, a lot of it has been really focused on the Generation of Miracles up to this point. So it's nice when they're like, actually, there's still other people that are good, <laughs> that, are, mm -hmm. that are good at this. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the story up to this point has kind of been like Kuroko's deal. Uh, and Kagami's just like, yeah, I'm going to be the best. But all of the kind of the emotional beats have been Kuroko, like these are my old friends and everything sucks now and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cool to get some of Kagami's backstory in there and some people from his past that aren't just focused on the, the five generation of miracles guys. Yeah. And I also really did like how Murray Sakabara actually goes into it. Because I think it's funny that he just puts a, puts a snack on top of the basketball and immediately stops them from playing. Yep. <laughs> Murasaki Bar is great. Yeah. Uh, we get a little bit more about how his personality is. Because I wasn't able to, um, on the last episode, see like where he is. And then in the next episode, they say, oh, he's just an idiot. <laughs> that, yep. that, that is the basics. So he sucks at everything. And it's funny because um, <laughs> in the manga, you have not met him by this point. Mm -hmm. um, because in the, in the anime, there's that special episode where it's like Kuroko's past or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it shows them like hanging out, like when Kisei is, and then they stop the robber and everything yep, yep. on the moped. Uh, none of that's in the manga. So <laughs> you don't spend a bunch of time with him ahead of time. So the, the, his reveal is just like him showing up. And you're like, oh my god, he's like six foot three. He's huge. He's insanely big. So, yeah, really good. Really good uh, start back to watching Koroko. And we'll go back to episode 29. D wait, no, I'm dumb. Episode 27, At the Winter Cup. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I jumped so many episodes. Forgive me, it's been a long-ass day. <laughs> <laughs> episode 27, so, uh, At the Winter Cup. Go ahead, Zen. The ball game ends up getting called off. They play, they scrap a little bit, and then it starts to rain. So they call that off. Um, and then during the the rainstorm, uh, Momoi like runs to the um, the the group at uh, Saren into yeah. like their gym, and there's a, a a whole thing about them like oh my god look how wet her shirt is, um, and then I think the the manager gives her uh, like Rico gives her um, a shirt that's way too small. For her. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a picture of a bear on it, and the With bear the gets bear a... <laughs> that's like right on the center of her boobs, um, and all of those students are very happy about that. The bear, and then we <laughs> learn that um, she's fighting with Aomine because she realized that he was injured, that he like hurt himself from overexertion when he was playing against Kisei, uh, and so she requested that he be benched, and that really pissed him off, and they were fighting a little bit, um, and Koroko cheers her up because that's his whole thing he's just a a nice boy um and then they apparently uh reveal that the other members of the generation of miracles that we haven't met yet which was um akashi mm -hmm. it's the only one that we haven't seen yet and then um there was like bar too uh didn't play because they made like an agreement that they wouldn't do it and then murasaki bar just does whatever akashi tells him to do basically uh, and then Kuroko's like, well, I need to up my game because I can't just be a passing guy forever. I have to learn something new. 
and he unveils his new technique, uh, which I don't remember if they name it in this episode or not yet. They don't. They the, don't uh, name it. Okay, well, then I won't name it yet, so it'll okay, spoil it. Well, actually, now but that I remember, very... I think they say it's, it's like something drive. I think it's about it's all the vanishing it. drive. Okay, I, th- that makes sense for a name. I don't think they call it a vanishing drive, but they said like it's a drive that will. Be... It's, yeah, it's supposed to be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a drive that you can't defend against. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's where this episode ends. Uh. This is another really good one. I really like the stuff at the beginning when um, they're having their little skirmish. Uh, Murray Sakabara has this entire thing where he's like, actually, I came here to stop the game. You would think that because he's on the Generation of Miracles that he would actually be super into basketball, but I think they reveal in this episode that actually he doesn't actually give a shit about basketball at all. He's just, He just does it because it's something that he is very good at, and he actually takes great joy in beating people who love basketball um especially if they're weak so <laughs> it's really funny because after they say this kirk goes like i don't i don't actually i like him but also he's like this and i was like are you do you really is it just because <laughs> it's like this man yeah. is getting well, hard- is kind of like the the basketball sadist where mm-hmm. he's like uh he wants to crush. I'm not the particularly enemy. like interested in it, but I'm also huge, and therefore I'm good at it by default. <laughs> uh, and so I like beating people who want to be good at it because it he, like his whole thing is he wants to show like I'm naturally gifted, so it doesn't matter how good you are because I'm just gonna be better than you because I'm fucking huge and you're not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, so I thought it was a very interesting dynamic um, from a lot of the other ones. And it's a different way of kind of like, because he's one of the very few ones that actually gets Kuroko mad. Because when he goes for, when he, when he, uh, the previous episode ended it with him saying, I want to crush you. And then this one begins like, ah, I'm just kidding. And he like gives him like a pat on the head. And it actually makes him angry. He's like, this stop. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, stop doing what you're doing. It's annoying. It's funny how they frame the head pat too, because they show him like, reaching out like he's gonna grab Kuroko's head and he's like I wanna fucking crush you and then it looks like he's gonna like crush his head and then he just pats him like yeah. on the top of the head he's like ah yes good <laughs> good Kuroko <laughs> it makes him extremely angry and he, every single time he does it um, he gets angry at him which is pretty good also the um, the third year which I believe Tepe or Kiyoshi I also liked the interaction they had because at the beginning he says like, "Hey, uh, it's, it's been a while since middle school," and then uh, um, his re- Murasakabara's reaction is, uh, "Sorry, I don't remember you. Um, I don't remember absolutely every weak person that I crush in basketball." <laughs> and then he immediately does a move. He did, he like does one of the Kuroko passes that are usually only um, Kagami does because they're too hard for most people to catch. But he's able to do it, and he's able to like dunk right in front of him, and then it like awakes him. It awakens him, and he goes like, "Ah, now I remember who you are. You should not have reminded me who you are, because <laughs> now uh-huh. I really want to crush you." <laughs> Which is a good way of doing it, and I think this is where they also reveal that. Um, I think they even said it in the previous episode, or they might say in the next one. But their whole deal is that um, apparently that Kiyoshi would have been considered. The best center is, I believe, the the role that they yeah, play. Center. Yeah, the best center, but then Mursa Gibara exists. So then there turns out that there's actually like a a shadow group of people who would have been considered the Generation of Miracles if they had... <laughs> which they, they make it seem like if it had been a different generation, which what I would say if it had only been a year sooner <laughs> before they came out, they yeah. would have they themselves would have been considered the Generation of Miracles. But because of how good the Generation of Miracles are, they kind of get over under they kind of get overshadowed. And he's one of the members on air. And later on, we meet another member of them. Um, but yeah, I really, uh, that was a really cool dynamic right there. Obviously, as a big fan of a silly fan service stuff, I like all the stuff with Momoe. Um, especially the, the, everyone's reaction of saying, damn. They're like looking at it and then the, the manager is immediately like, all right, everyone, take a lap. He's like, it's raining. It's like, don't care. <laughs> 
really don't care. Um, and then when they give her the shirt as well, it's really funny because they say the bear. And then later on, when um, Kiyoshi meets up with the other ones and she sees him there, and then like um, she goes to hug Kuroko, and everyone is immediately like, "You bastard!" Which I think yeah, is the <laughs> instantly <laughs> angry at him. But Kiyoshi has a reaction, which is like the bear, which is like he doesn't even acknowledge the girl. He just acknowledges the bear that he sees first, which is pretty funny. Um, uh, but yeah, that all that stuff was pretty good. And then also when they do join up later, we see that they actually did go off and run in the rain. <laughs> like when she told them to yeah. go take a run, they actually did go do it. Uh, there's also a part where Momoi, when the the manager's talking and she's like saying something that it's actually pretty pertinent, and Momoi goes like. Man, she really does know her stuff for someone of the B rank, and she's like, I don't understand where the chess thing has to come into this at all for you to <laughs> for you to bring it up. It seems kind of uncalled for. Uh, I think it's either and there's also a moment. I think it was either in this episode or in the previous one where um, <laughs> Kuriko goes to use. They call him number two, but it's a dog that looks exactly like Kuriko. He uses him to punch uh, Kagami in the face. <laughs> Yeah, that's why they call him number two, because he's Kuriko number two. Yeah, he looks exactly like him, so number two makes sense. I like that moment as well. And there's also a moment where Kagami is like talking about like when she's giving the reasons why that they're having troubles. He says it in a very like unhelping way, and it makes her cry. And everyone's immediate reaction is, you made her cry. And he's like, ah, oh, damn it, I really fucked up on this one. And then Kuriko's like, all right, it's okay. He cheers her up, and then everyone immediately goes to Kagami. He's like, see, that's how you're supposed to do it. He's like, I already feel bad. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty good. So, And yeah, that that final moment where he does the drive, and it just instantly uh, spooks the hell out of her. Because I also like that when he shows it to her, he doesn't do it to be like, I want to show it to you. He's like, I think you can use this to potentially get back in some good graces. Because the the entire argument that they're having, and you can see actually, which I, I kind of like too, is that he says what he says to her, which is basically, get out of my face, I never want to see you again. And then he realizes he immediately fucked up because he's like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, you, this isn't supposed to happen. <laughs> like, you usually you're supposed to take what I say and then still be here, but then she actually takes great offense to it. And you can see, at least for the most part, that he's not being, like, heartless. He's just being, like, he's bad with his words. Similar to, to Kagami, he's just, like, really shitty when it comes to women. Yes. So, good episode. Um, I really liked it. How do you feel, Zen? Yes, I like it quite a bit. Um... The even I thought the bits about the t-shirt were funny. Uh, and that's usually <laughs> not my bag, so I thought that, even I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, I like the uh, little bits about uh, Kyoshi or Tepe or whichever one you want to call him, yeah. and the Uncrowned Kings. I think that's a cool little like group where they're basically like these guys are also really good. They got fucked over by these other people that happen to be like <laughs> ungodly good. Yeah. So it's just kind of unfair. Um and I, I like it because it kind of reinforces like the generation of miracles existing just fucks like everybody over basically because they're just so good that you can't do anything about it. Uh but I like that like because most people just kind of give up when that happens and Kyoshi doesn't. He's like, you know what, we're gonna just keep being really good at basketball. We're gonna we're gonna play all the time and be good. And it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does kind of show his like what the t- what their team was basically missing, and they kind of show that in the next game that the kind of games that they kind of have up that he really was like the missing piece that they needed to like have a co- cohesive team. I think that's cool, both in terms of what they need in the in the team and what they need in terms of like like group spirit and stuff, like the yeah the, the, he's, got the he's got the leader mindset. Yes, without actually being the leader, which is pretty uh, good. I also forgot, I also did like that they keep bringing up Akashi, and then you they just... The, it's like to in hushed mentions of what he is uh, doing, because he's the one that I just don't know anything about in the Generation of Miracles. Which is interesting, because you'd think that they would save the strongest one, which is uh, Almine, to be like the... Because he's a clearly the best strongest one of all of them he would be safe for the last one but for this one they're specifically like keeping it hush and he's also seems pretty sure that he's going to win regardless of anything so it makes me very curious to see how (laughs) how what is his deal 
I, I, I just know absolutely nothing about him. Yeah, he, he is a uh, hashtag him, basically. <laughs> uh, look forward to seeing more of it. And speaking of more, let's move on to the next episode. Episode 28. I was about to say episode 29. Start! That's the name of this episode. <laughs> Uh, so this episode, we have the preliminaries for the Winter Cup, because they have to play qualifying games to get in, uh, like to, to enter the tournament. Uh, and they're playing against Jose High School, and it's the first game for Kiyoshi back, because he had that leg injury that stopped him from playing, but now he's able to play again. And uh, it, it really highlights, the whole episode basically is just highlighting how elevated the team is with Kiyoshi back because they make a point to be like, oh my god, Kagami's, you know, completely locked down. He's got like multiple people on him all the time. And it really doesn't end up mattering that much because Kiyoshi's just able to to play at that level. Um like he's got good offense and he's got good defense because he's the center, so he's able to kind of improve them on every side of the ball basically. Uh, and they end up kind of I don't think it's a blowout, but they win by like a pretty big margin in this game. Uh, this is kind of like the feel good. You know how, like, uh, in a in a battle shonen, after the main ca- cast gets their shit rocked, we have to have like the the turnaround, like feel good episodes. Yeah. That's what this is. Yep, it's the this is your, <laughs> we're here to win now. We're we're better now. Episodes in wrestling terms, they call it getting your heat back after you. You know, you have your main guy job out to your biggest dude in your company, then he comes back and like destroys the dude in four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make them look strong gotta keep them looking as strong as possible but yeah the this is definitely a case of them like not doing a victory lap but just to show like hey we're much better now it's kind of like in the funny enough this is used a lot in shonen stuff it's like in the dark tournament before they actually go to do the tournament when they're just like all on the boat and then they instantly like take care of everyone that's on there and it's like no issue to them whatsoever it's very similar to that or when Yusuke actually finally wakes up. Even though when Yusuke actually does wake up, he does have a very like harrowing match now that I think about it. But still, it's that same idea. <laughs> you gotta show yeah. off how good uh, they've improved since last time. Uh, and yeah, that's what this episode is. It's uh, the main, main driving force of this episode, and I think it does a very good job at that. Um, like you said, Kyoshi shows a lot of what the the team was missing overall uh and how he's able to slot in there and really take them to the next level and a lot of people make the comment too is like they're not that much it's like there's an improvement but it shouldn't be this crazy of an improvement whatever that the things that they improved and whatever they needed it's like a completely different team now um which is cool to see especially because the people that they were going against uh they were, like, on the offset, they said, like, oh, this would be a terrible matchup for them. And then when they actually do it, it's like, actually, no. Um, one of their biggest weaknesses was not having a center. So now that they have their center, that weakness is now flipped upside down. And now it's actually one of their greatest strengths now. And it works out pretty well. It does pretty good. I also like the moment where... Um, the enemy team, the dude who's supposed to be their rookie and their all-star, who's supposed to be the one to show them up, they say in the locker room that there's a... They think that they may have a female manager, and it makes the guy super excited, and you can see that he has, like, a... a I mean, it's a... Uh, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's a porn mag, but I think in Japan they call him grav, Gravur... Gravur? It's like G-R-A-V-U-R-E. I know what those are. Don't question my my thoughts about this. But either way, he has one of those type of magazines. <laughs> and the, on the cover of it is a very, like, um, busty woman as well. And it's really funny because he gets super excited. And then when they go off to go play, he sees her and he's like, you've shot my dreams. <laughs> I was expecting so much more. And then she immediately, like, um, they cut to her, and then she cuts, she gives them, like, the side language of, like, the murder them, <laughs> kill them, <laughs> beat them. Uh, and she immediately gets, like, super angry aura, like, super sane aura around her, and they're like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> immediately, we'll destroy them in your name. Which is really funny. And yeah, the very good episode, a very good way of showing off how the team's currently doing. Do you have anything more to say about it, Zen? No, that was good. 
Yep. All right, then. Let's move on to the next one, because there is only one answer. Finally, episode 29, we're here. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying to get here all night, apparently. Uh, Anticipation. Go ahead, then tell us what it's about. Episode 29, we're still going through the prelims, uh, and we see that Saren wins another game. But then we see that uh, Shutoku also won a game by an absurd margin, because... Midorima is here, uh, busting shit up as he does. We end up bumping into someone named Hanamiya, who is another one of the uncrowned kings, like Kyoshi, and he's actually the one that injured Kyoshi, uh, uh, like very much intentionally. This guy's a real piece of shit. Mm. Uh, they make him, he, he even looks like a, he's got like the slick, like the greasy looking hair. He's just a real, he's a real asshole. Yes, um, I uh, from the immediate look at him because they show him on the OP because we have a new OP for this one that I was gonna save after we got to the final episode. But I noticed him on it and I had an immediate dislike because I hate these type of characters. <laughs> They're the characters yeah. I love to see get beat up the most. He's a huge piece of shit. Um. But both Shitoku and Seiren get through their next prelim game, and then it's time for them to play one another. And it is uh, Midorima versus Kagami Part 2. And Kagami's kind of feeling himself because he's able to block uh, Midorima's shots because he's able to jump up high enough. Even though Midorima puts that like funky arc on the ball, um, Kagami's able to jump up high enough to block his shots. But then it turns out that Midorima's plan is that it takes more effort um, for Kagami to block him than it does for him to shoot. So he's basically just going to keep forcing Kagami to block over and over and over and over again until he's not able to physically keep it up anymore. Mm. Yeah, and that's where the episode ends with that revelation. Mm -hmm. So, let's see this one. Yeah, the... I really like the introduction of this um, Hanamiya character because you can immediately feel like he's just a greasy slime bag. Because he was supposed to play... His team was supposed to play against the one with um, uh, Mirarima, but they, they on purpose didn't put any of their first string players... So that's why they had like such a crazy blowout is that the other team wasn't even trying. And you can even see after um, the match, because Midorima like leaves, I think, before it's even decided, and he's like, This isn't even a real game. This is this is, <laughs> I feel gross playing this. It just feels wrong. Like he even he can tell that there was something fucked up with the way that they were playing basketball that is technically in the rules of basketball, but just felt wrong for whatever reason. And yeah, they when he gets to talk to them and they have their conversation and then they talk about how there's five uncrowned kings and also on their team, you would think that he's like, oh, because they're on the same team, so it must be like Koriko. is like, nah, it's not exactly like that. If anything, they're the exact opposite of each other. Kiyoshi is always super positive and wants to play a good game. And then uh, Hanamiya is the character, is the, the person who just wants to have the dirtiest game, easiest win possible. So... Uh -huh. I thought it was a very good introduction to him. Like you said, you can immediately feel the slime ball. <laughs> the slime ball this coming from the dude. Hate hate looking at him. Can't wait to eventually. I also I he does bring up the injury, but I don't think they reveal that he was the one that injured him just yet. So I was I was curious what he meant by the injury. I thought that it meant that um Potentially, maybe he was still injured, he was playing off, and it wasn't 100%, but it makes a lot more sense if he's the one that actually deliberately injured him. Because now it makes it seem like maybe he'll try that shit again if they go against each other in some way. So, interesting uh, uh, back and forth between them there. And in terms of the actual uh, game that was the, the next game that was coming up, that was also a very good start of it. I love... Uh, Midorima, when they show his good luck charm, he got, like, a bear statue with a fish. And he goes, like, don't you already have one of these? He's like, it's a bigger bear. <laughs> he went out specifically <laughs> to go find a bigger one. <laughs> Which is really good. And I like a lot of the callbacks to that game. Like, they mentioned that it's raining the same way it was raining when they first had their match. Um, they talk about, like, how the hunger specifically the hunger that only comes from when you lose like when they first went against each other they didn't really think much of their team but now that they've lost to them 
Like, th- th- it's clear that when, even though they won, they shouldn't have won that game. And they, and even still now, the enemy team is still way better than them. But the problem is, is that they're not looking down on them. They're looking at them directly, which means it's actually going to be way harder for them to win because it's much easier to sneak a win against someone who's looking down on you than to sneak a win on someone who is seeing you at their level. Um, I thought that was really like a cool way of showing, like, oh no, this is going to be a completely different game because they're treating them different, and you can feel that they're treating them different, and you can also see that they're just playing different from the last time that they even went against. They go into it a little bit more in the next episode, but they're playing completely different. He feels different. Um, uh, at one point, Kuroko has like this shake. Um, shit, was the shake, did the shake happen in this episode? It happened in the previous one. I forgot, but we should bring it up. Uh, Kagami goes for a dunk, and, um, when he does the dunk, it's so good because it awakens every other generation of Miracle member. Because <laughs> they yeah. sense it in the air that something is happening. <laughs> I could not get away without mentioning that moment, but that moment was so unbelievably cool because when it cut to Almine, I was like, can he feel the basketball? And then the answer was he did feel the basketball. He, in fact, yeah, because I think they say that, like, uh, they're becoming aware of someone who's on their level, basically. Yep, and they show him, like, specifically there's a door that closes them between everyone else, and someone is forcibly opening the door, and then he's behind the door. <laughs> and that was really good. That was in the previous episode. I'm bringing it up now, but I remembered it as they're going off against each other. And you can kind of see that way there now as he's, like, trying to... He's realized that no matter what he does, as long as Kagami can jump as high as he does, he'll always be able to bl- block his shots. Um... Which is really cool that his idea was is that I'm not actually going to change anything about what I do. I'm just going to train in endurance and let's go. <laughs> we'll see how long that you can actually legitimately last against me. And it ends actually ends up paying off pretty well. Um, but yeah, in general, I liked it when uh, Kuroko felt that there was something different about him. And he just couldn't. He's like, he's not playing how he usually plays and that kind of goes into it a little bit more in the next episode and as they show a little bit more of it like there's something different about him that makes it very hard for them to actually f- go against him now it's like a completely different game even though not that much has changed since the last time um that they went against each other so really cool start of it how do you feel zen yeah, it's cool. Um, I like the bits, especially about Mitarima, like uh, planning to change his style to accommodate because you know, and a lot of stuff like this, the the solution is well, I'm just gonna do the thing better than you do the thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and instead, he's he, he didn't do that, and he decided he was gonna uh, improve on a specific aspect that was gonna force Kagami to adapt to that aspect of his play, uh, which is super cool. And I really like Shutoku's chant. They have the best chant in the series. What is their chant? Just when the when the audience just goes Shutoku over and over again. Oh yes, yes. It's the best one of all of them. <laughs> a lot of syllables in that one, so it sounds good when they're screaming it out. <laughs> um so yeah, real good start of it. I w- when it hit episode twenty nine and I saw that this is what the start of it, I said to myself fuck, I'm not gonna, this is not finishing in episode 30. <laughs> no. I said to myself, uh, fuck. And then I remembered the actual pain of watching Karka, which is that these episodes end, and I always end on a cliffhanger. But let's talk about that cliffhanger in episode 30. I've been waiting for this. Go ahead. So episode 30, uh, the game is continuing with Shutoku, uh, Kagami, continues to block Mitarima's shots, uh, and then they've decided that they're going to double-team Mitarima and just kind of leave the middle as is, which lets the rest of Shitoku kind of play around more freely. Um, Kuroko finds himself pretty much ineffective because of Takao, who just has eagle eye plus one, just has the hawk's eye, mm-hmm. which is the same ability that the guy on Saren has, but better, which must really suck for that guy. He got um, power crept out of the basketball. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got high school basketball power crept out of the meta. <laughs> um, so Saren is working on just trying to be like 
fast and overwhelming on offense and not let them catch back up, but it's not really working. Uh, it's really hard to not let the team catch back up when they have a guy that can land shots from anywhere <laughs> on the entire court. It's mm-hmm. pretty difficult. Um, eventually, they start co- creeping back up and pulling ahead, and they bring Kuroko in to bust out the uh, vanishing drive and see if it can make a difference. Yep. And that's where this one ends. Oh, it's so annoying. (laughs) I I didn't even get to see it. So, all right. So this episode, very good. (laughs) Obviously, that moment, the the moment when they subbed out Kuroko was very funny. When he's like, telling him, he's like, Kiyoshi's like, telling was like, okay, if you can't actually make the pass, you're no good to us. You're actually a detriment. And he like gets slightly smaller with every statement that he says. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> he's like damn and then, so they sub him out and that's pretty good um i like it when they start talking about like no this isn't going to go the way that it usually is we're gonna go into what is basic what is a point a point war or a point race where we're just going to their idea is that they actually can't stop them but it's okay as long as you immediately make a basket the next <laughs> immediately afterwards and then you just keep on racing with each other's points wise um and they can see actually the uh, Sanrin's actual way that they're supposed to function which is like a non-stop uh gunshot of like shooting dudes out and then having them go in and then taking them back out and then putting them back in <laughs> Which is how they were supposed to function with Kiyoshi on the team, but they weren't able to actually do that <clears throat> uh, while he wasn't there. But now that he's back, they're actually able to do it, and uh, it's really cool seeing him play a super aggressive style of game. And it also reminded me of ask actual basketball, where I was like, oh yeah, I've seen this. Where I've actually been watching basketball, where I was like, well, it's okay. The best way to keep up with, uh, with the enemy team is to just score right after they score. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Technically true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If they, if if uh, what's that thing Sean Connery say? If they pull out a knife, you pull out a gun. That's a Chica- that's the Chicago way. That's exactly what you need to do. They hit you with a three pointer. You hit them back with another three pointer. <laughs> that way, you in theory don't lose by that much, <laughs> unless you're from behind, in which case you probably do lose. But yeah, it was really cool to see the the fast running gun style game gameplay. Uh, and in general, continuing to see Kagami kind of be pushed to his limits against, uh, Midorima, because Midorima starts actually passing to his team, which is really funny because they actually dedicate the previous episode, next episode on, where he says, I'm going to pass. He's like, can we get, someone break out the video. Can you say that again? He's like, I'm going to pass. (laughs) It's like, okay, we got it on tape now. He's like, shut up. Uh, and in this one, he says, like, I'm going to pass the ball, which on the previous game, he was the guy who always said, give me the ball no matter what. I'll just keep making every single shot. It doesn't matter. But now he's actually giving it to his team, and they bring it up that he's playing a different game of basketball than when he usually did, is that now he's playing it with a team. And that makes him much scarier because previously it was just like, focus everything on him. And if we stop him, then we stop them. But now that they're functioning as an actual team, it's making it much more difficult for them to actually get in and do things. Um, Kisei and Momoi actually have like a conversation to get together about how they talk about like uh, how he's changed and how they've changed. And it specifically has to deal with Koriko. Something about talking to Koriko makes you want to trust in other people for whatever reason and that's a change that's happened to uh kisei as obviously when he went against almine that was the reason that they lost is that he passed to the end he passed to one of his teammates and that was enough to for almine to break out of the funk and go ha i would never pass my own team you failed (laughs) and he was able to stop his copy and in this case um midorima is passing to his own team and actually using his team um to play the game and they talk about like now it's actually possible to see him smile every once in a while 
I don't know. It was a very nice kind of change of a character who has up until this point been someone who was very much of the mindset of, it's okay, just pass me the ball. I can do it. I'll do it. It's not a problem. You're not even really... The only function you have on this team is to pass it to me, and then we're good, and then you get to... And then we see the kind of flip change is that because of Koriko, the way that they have to take this team seriously now, they can't play that the way that they were used to, and they have to actually make adjustments. And that's enough for them to say, like, man, he's so different. But then the, the when you get the perspective of someone on their team, the teammate goes, like, actually, is it really that much of a change? I guess it is enough to just completely change the game of how it goes. And they talk about, like, how they actually saw him on the team, where it's like, yeah, he's kind of a weirdo. <laughs> but there's just something about him that you can't, you have to respect because of how good he is at playing the game and how dedicated he is to doing it. So they never actually ever hated him. But now with the way he's playing, and now it feels like they're actually feeling more like a team. Like, they're starting to come around and being like, maybe we are, we are in some semblance of the word friends, maybe. And very cool. Makes it seem like, uh, like I said previously, even though it's the same setting, it's the same everything, it feels like t a completely different team and a completely gif different game from last time. Um... And I can't wait for Kirko to come in here and do his fucking thing. I can't believe the episode ends where it ends. How do you yeah, feel? You know, we need to plan these out better because I feel like you always end right when they're like, it's time for us to do the cool thing. And then it cuts off. What you... Tell me about it. Apparently I need to just do a better job scouting ahead of it. Um, yeah, we need to like break these up into into full games and we just watch the full game or something. That might be what we need to do for... Oh, what we do for Gintama now, where we do, like, we make sure to divide <laughs> up into arcs. I just yeah. do that with Kuroko, so that you don't keep getting cut off. With... It, it's, it's every it... time we do Kuroko, they're like, alright, it's time to turn this game around. Freeze frame. And then you're like, well... And then, you can, and then freeze frame cut to me in my red as I go, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> It's so annoying. It happens. So, it's happened so many times. You have I've after this one. After we do, I'll look ahead and we'll see how it's gonna go. I'll let you know ahead of time if we need to only do a five or maybe do a slightly more, so it's better planned out, <laughs> so that I it, we don't do this again. But still, it is very annoying to be like I have to wait so <laughs> I have to wait a bit to actually get to the end of this arc. But at least it's only like maybe a week, and then I'm good and I can continue on. Uh, we'll plan it out. But before I figure out that, tell me how what you liked about this episode, Zen. <laughs> uh, I like pretty much any game against any generation of Miracles person, so that helped. Um, Midorim was actually not my favorite one. Really? Um, I, I find games with him to be a little bit boring. It's just because the game always comes down to, like, how do we stop the shot? <laughs> and because his his skill is just shooting the ball, like, it's not that exciting to watch compared to, like, Almine or something. It's true. Um, so he's not my favorite, uh, but I do like Shutoku games in general. I like their chant. I like their uh, their team. Uh, I like Takao a lot. He's one of like my favorite non main cast guys. Mm -hmm. Is Midorima's little sidekick. His buddy, the his uh, anti Kuroko yeah. buddy. Yeah, and uh, I like that he yeah he's kind of is the anti Kuroko that can you know uh, keep him in check because the misdirection doesn't really work on him because uh, he can see the whole court the whole time. Uh, and unfortunately, I, I wish it didn't end where it did, because the next episode is so fucking cool. <laughs> the next episode title is even cool. It's called I Surpassed It A Long Ago. That's a really cool title, but unfortunately we're going to have to cut it off here. <laughs> yeah. We'll be back next week, where, in theory, we will do... One, two, three, four, five... Maybe if we likely five episodes but maybe we'll do a little bit more so that winter training camp isn't concluded in it and then start off on winter cup i'll look ahead a little bit to see if winter cup starts with a actual game uh i looked ahead uh, okay winter it does start uh if you're looking at winter cup on the the like episode list that actually is in the middle of a game when it starts up really I'll yes. Yes. Mm. Uh, it looks like the last episode before the Winter Cup begins is episode thirty-seven. Definitely, and the Winter one? Cup itself begins on episode thirty-eight. 
Okay, so what we'll do is that likely we'll go up to episode 37 then. So for next, we will watch episode 31 to 37, and then we'll figure out the cutoff date for this specific game and then go from there. That will be our best bet here. Yeah, that way especially you can be- actually not have to wait seven days in between. Yeah, especially because Gintama's cool going yeah, exactly. And also because Gintama's going to be pretty easy next week <laughs> compared to what we got. We'll, we'll have time. For Gintama, it's literally just like maybe one or two episodes and a bunch of OPs and EDs. <laughs> so we have time to uh, dedicate it to Kuroko, at least. Uh, <clears throat> it's funny that you mentioned it. The, the, the games with him specifically are you, the ones that are uh, a little bit boring. But I actually think as of right now, I think I actually do like Mitarima the most out of all the generation of miracles and not in terms of the gameplay style but in terms of the actual person himself <laughs> it, it, it was because he took that it's because he took those uh those sweets and just fucking dunked it on a guy on a motorcycle <laughs> i think back to that yeah all the time it is funny it is extremely good the fact that his game plan is what i would imagine to be the best way to play basketball which is just always go for three pointers and you just win he, his gameplay is actually just that. <laughs> if I just go yeah, for close... It's, it's literally it's just three points is better than two points. Yes, and I'm like, damn, finally a guy who plays in the way that I imagined <laughs> that would be the best way to finally play. someone gets it. Yeah, and I also did like um, Murray Sakabari just being a complete idiot. Uh, like, the, the way that they got him to even convince him to play, because originally he didn't want to play... Was that um, Kagami's like, he sounds like a child. I'm going to treat him like a child. Nice going, coward. And then everyone's like, is he trying to get him to play? And then his immediate reaction is like, who are you calling a coward? <laughs> and yeah, then it works completely. It 100% <laughs> works. He like does a full on like, all right, let's go. And then they're both like going, whatever, idiot. It's like, what about you, idiot? It's like, oh my God, you're both children. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, pretty good. But yeah, so that's the game plan for next week for Kuroko, which is going to be episodes 31 to 37. Uh, Oh, shit. Why? There we go. Yes. 31 to 37. Um, And now it's time to end the show. As I say, if you want to see more Zen content, the number one way to see more Zen content is to go to Zen's channel and check out Shonen and Chill, and any other things that Zen might have planned for the future. You can also check out Zen on my channel, where there's plenty of Zen content, but in general, you should go to Zen's channel. I'm also here, (laughs) often. Yes, as I've said beforehand, I am the number two proprietor of Zenrado videos on YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) If you want the best quality of videos for Zen, you go to Zen's channel. But if you want the most quality of Zen, you, the most Zen videos, you go to me. <laughs> That's where you can find it. Um, what's going on in uh, Shonen Jump Land? Anything interesting going on? Uh, we are still fighting Sukuna in Jujutsu Kaisen. We just got Yuta's domain expansion. Pretty mm. cool looking. Uh... Kagurabachi just finished its first arc. Ooh. First volume sales are coming out soon, so people are very excited to see how it does in hopes that it does not get the axe. Um, yeah, that's a, this is a key time. Yeah, that's a very important. That first that first volume is, is huge. Yep. Uh, and otherwise, nothing that I can think of that's that's too exciting. Mm, okay. My Hero Academia is one chapter closer to being over. Well, is, it, is, is it finishing soon? Or is it no? Is it uh, not uh, actually finishing soon? <laughs> let me well, <laughs> let me put it back. Finishing soon. I don't know how soon, but yeah, the, another one in the books. Like, get out of the way. As we start the slowest crawl to the ending of uh, a thing out there, it's really funny whenever I see someone be like, because I, I back when I was on Twitter. If you don't know, I left Twitter because I'm playing like a dragon, so I want to avoid all form of spoilers. And in general, it mostly uh, devolved into Pal World discourse, and I wasn't uninterested in it. Um, so I left. That's fair. Um, but one of the things that you would always see on there is that every couple months you would see the post where it's like Shonen Jump in so much trouble, so many things are ending. And I want to say for a solid year or two, they've had My Hero Academia on it, 
And I keep going, this motherfucker, this motherfucking manga has not closed. That all those old posts saying, like, it's ending soon, it's not actually over. And it's also funny to me that they also put One Piece. I'm like, listen, my hero is taking over a year to finish their final arc. That final arc of One Piece is not going to end until another seven years from now. <laughs> You're out of your fucking mind. Yeah, you no, think- not happening. It's like, oh man, what is Jump going to do in the interim seven years of having One Piece money? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure that they'll release absolutely nothing in those seven years of having something out there. Yeah, uh, all we know is that Jujutsu Kaisen is supposed to end this year. That's all we've got. Yeah, that's the only. That one actually feels like it is legitimately going to end pretty soon. <laughs> Mainly because it feels like they are making the craziest beeline to finish line that I've ever seen a manga take. Not since Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> Have I seen a manga say it's time to end the series? <laughs> um, but all right, there you go. And if you want some more me content, you can always come here uh, to my channel where I do Fugo videos. Persona 3 Remake is going to be coming out soon. I don't know if by this, the time you hear this, if I, I think I wanted to, I talked to my brother about it. It's like, hey, maybe we should get together and sit down and record something with Persona 3 Remake because uh, it's a uh, Persona 3, very huge game for me. The number one song you hear when I do Fago videos, when I talk about unit breakdowns is literally a Persona 3 song. <laughs> when the moon's reaching stars. I've had to tell multiple people. He's like, as they say, what's that song in the background? I'm like, that's when the moon's reaching stars for Persona 3. Uh-huh. Check it out. It's that's awesome. It is a very good song. So I'm pretty excited for that. I'm still playing Infinite Wealth. I'm not recording any of that. <laughs> so good luck with that one. That one's pretty cool. It's a pretty good game, though. Um... There's a moment in it where... Oh, actually, I want to say that for later. But it's a very good game, but it's also very long. I, when I got to a point in the game where it was like chapter 4 and I unlocked Pokemon Go raid system, I was like, this game is too much. This game needs to calm down with how much is inside of it. This is a stupid amount of game to put in a game. I'm like 20 hours in and on chapter 5. <laughs> so maybe halfway yeah, done. Yeah, that's me with... Uh... FF7 Rebirth. I, I took the day it comes out, the following day, because it comes out on Thursday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I took that day and that Friday and that Monday off, and I feel like I should just take the whole rest of that week off, to be honest. Like That's what I'm feeling like. My work is... It's, it's supposed to be 100 hours to 100% complete it. So. Jesus Christ. I have no idea for my 100%, but yeah, the, the G- releasing giant jrpgs and randomly at the in february is sure is a fucking choice on their part or Uh uh-huh really makes it tough for me to go to anywhere else because i was playing a lot of rebirth and uh, not rebirth i was playing a lot of um final fantasy 14 and i was enjoying that originally when we were going to stream on monday i was just going to continue streaming that so i could keep playing it (laughs) because otherwise i would just keep tripping away at infinite wealth but uh work on in the way of that but maybe we'll get back to streaming on monday and we'll get back to final fantasy 14 that'll be pretty fun um sounds like a plan to me yeah it does sound like a plan to me and that's the end of the episode everyone thank you very much for watching glad to have Koriko back glad to be talking about Koriko. and we are going to be headlining to the end of Koriko. and what comes after Koriko is a question we'll ask once we're fully done with Koriko. <laughs> i have yeah that's- we have we have usher Kuroko off before yeah. it's time. No, no, we I am fully one hundred percent dedicated to finishing Kuroko, and then what comes next, we'll figure it out. I have a pretty. I wish we could have gotten into, um, Sket Dance because we're about to get to the Sket Dance crossover in Gintama, but we're not going to be able to make it in time. So I think it's better to just hold off to it for now. Um, sure. um we could probably go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX to go for f- Season 2 and maybe finally finish off that as well. Yeah, we could do GX. Well, we'll figure it out. We got, we got. There's so many things on the list of, of stuff for us to watch. <laughs> that There's plenty of things for us to take time and figure out and talk about um, to do. But that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. As, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you want to show any form of support, watching is good enough for us. Leaving a like and commenting does help out um, 
algorithm type stuff. Though I honestly don't know how much algorithm support you can have for this kind of content on stuff. It doesn't matter. Me and Zen do this because we're dedicated to a cause and we want to check out more Shonen Jump anime. That's what we're yeah, here for. Yeah, it's about, it's about the mission. Exactly. Not the, not the rewards. Exactly. I'm not here thinking about it. And thankfully, I'm able to make it so there's not very many um, ads on these videos because... Thankfully, I have Forgo for that, and Forgo does perfectly well. So that makes it so that... Because trust me, if I let YouTube dictate how much ads should be on a videos of this length, there would be untold amount of ads. Yes, my God. If you get a, a video this long and you let YouTube put the ads in, there's like 57 Oof. ads in there. Yeah, I remove a vast majority of them, and I think I put at least maybe one or uh, two or three, depending on the length of them. And I'm able to keep that length, thankfully, because for Go, for the most part, is the thing that actually brings in any form of ad revenue in for the channel. So, And that I need to use that to fund my crippling gotcha <laughs> addictions. Agonizing gotcha addiction. Yeah. Exactly. I have some future plans up, and I looked at the cost of how much it would be, and I'm like, I need to get, <laughs> I need to get as much as possible from this. Thank God, taxes. I've gone. I've entered the point now where I can declare this as I actually make enough money off this, so you take taxes from me. Therefore, this is now tax deductible. <laughs> take these, please. Thank you. I've reached that point. But anyway, that's the end of the video, everyone. Till next time, we'll see you later. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.